when I look at the summer league squad, I mean, you've got obviously Aaron Neesmith, you've got Pritchard, you've got Romeo, mm-hmm. you know, you, you've got the guys that were on the team last year. Uh, Grant Carson Williams Edwards. did decline, though. Grant Williams, huh? declined. Grant Williams declined the offer to play at summer league. I ain't mad at him for doing And that. I heard him get criticized on a local radio station because millennials want to take breaks. Well, listen. I am not – this is the thing that I think some people sometimes lose sight of is that when you get to the NBA, the goal is to stay in the NBA as long as you can. It becomes a business. And I think Grant Williams saw the business side of things last year in a way that I don't know if he knew it was going to be like that. I mean, Grant Williams was a guy that came in, late first-round pick, great personality, very loquacious. People, you know, talk that up about him. Uh, made a couple of nice moves early on in his in his career, but he had that stretch where he could not make a three to save his life. And he has to be able to do that as an undersized four. And then we saw this past year where, you know, Grant was logging a lot of minutes. And statistically speaking, it was a lot of empty calories. Plus minus looked good, but there wasn't anything that he was doing that you could call a discernible skill that you could rely on consistently. And to me, Summer League, uh, for young players, you're looking to establish – your foundation. And I think for Grant, he would be much better served working on that part of his game in training camp. Because I don't, because if I'm him, I'm thinking, I don't want to be Gershon in, in summer league. I don't want to go to summer league. Don't play so great. Next thing you know, I'm on a flight outside the country yeah. playing in front of, instead of playing in front of thousands of fans, I'm playing in front of like a few hundred. And instead of, you know, you know, me, just being part of this really great league, the, the the most the most talented league in the world. I'm playing for a league that's eh, it's all right. It's all right. You don't want to be that dude. And then and, and because once you leave the NBA, it's incredibly hard, it's hard to, get, to back get back in. in. It's I mean it's that it's the ultimate club for ballers. Once you get in, you ain't trying to leave to the club till you can't stay no more. And you hoping that you can you know when they start looking around, who do we need to get rid of? You need to have your drink in hand. Mm-hmm. And then hope that they don't see you. You need to be, <laughs> you need to be as inconspicuous as possible. And I think for Grant, that's a smart move because I, I do think that if he were to be on the summer league team, um, I do think that he could potentially do more harm than help himself by doing that. So shout out to Grant Williams for being smart about the game. Oh. Respect the game. I respect smart that. millennials. <laughs> I respect. I re- absolutely respect that about him. But I, but the one thing about the summer league team, it's going to be the Yan Madar show. That's who we came to see. That is who we absolutely came to see. But there's a now. There's another guy that I want to see, Who's that? and it's a guy that not a lot of people. Some people may remember him, but it, it, he's not someone that just jumps off the pages. And that is Zach August. Played at Notre Dame. He's from. He was born in Cambridge. Uh, I think he played in Marlboro. Yeah, he played at. No, he was like a four-year guy at Notre Dame. Wait, is this a new Ten Questions with NBC Ten Boston guest? <laughs> oh Just wow! Promoting at every moment. Oh, play, buddy. Look at that from Cambridge, though. I didn't know that. That's phenomenal. That's where he was born. But but he he had a he had a good but not great career at Notre Dame, and you know th- there were things about him that didn't necessarily translate well to the NBA, which is why he was undrafted. But he's six ten to forty. Uh, he's quick, good good rim runner. Uh, you love this. He's half Greek, half Haitian. Ooh. I'm rooting it's, for him. <laughs> yes, he speaks Haitian Creole, actually, from my wow, understanding. Wow, his Creole's yeah. probably better than mine, too. I'm ashamed but of him. I think, I think he would be someone that, when, again, as they – and this was, and I was thinking this before they got Ennis Cantor, but mm-hmm. they're still probably going to look to add one more big. Uh, and so, who knows? He And they may sign him to a two-way contract and go that route with him. Who knows? He's like 27, 28 years old, something like that. So, age-wise, he's in a good place. Uh, experience-wise, having played a couple years overseas – uh, he wouldn't be a bad guy to see him in a G League kind of develop and see, you know, whether that's someone that you could, you know, add to the to the main team at some point. But Yamadar is the one that we're all curious about, that we all want to see. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, what what are your thoughts about him? I mean, I, I, I don't know what to expect. What do you think? <laughs> that's what, I'm at the same boat. You have the scouters that the, immediately when you hear them, Everyone's on Twitter, like, according to my research, I've seen this, and he's great. He's a great fit for the Celtics. Take it with a grain of salt. I want to see what he does in Summer League. I know that's not the be-all, end-all. I've said that before. Summer League is 
really just a showcase of whatever skill sets these players have on a it's like a I like to see it as like that midway point between like between high school and college when you get that summer program mm-hmm. and it's not as high paced as college will be but you get a little adaptation to it and I think that's what summer league is so if we could see what Yam gives us in Las Vegas and we can kind of translate that to the Celtic season then I'll I'll be a little more I think informed when I can see with my own eyes on well, that next level because it's, it's right. still a different level of basketball. Yeah, I I've seen so many summer league superstars that became regular season. Wait, who 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 is that? Mm-hmm. I, mean, exactly. I, I think about, I think about a guy Carson Edwards. I mean, Carson was great in summer league, and hasn't been that great as a pro. Um, I, and I'm I'm glad that he is on the summer league team because he's a guy that I do think has to establish some value. I do think that there is the potential for him to get Gershon if he doesn't play well. Mm. Um, I, it would not surprise me or shock me. Uh, and I hope he does well. Cause I mean, I look back at his career at Purdue, hell of a shooter. I uh, look back at some of the games he's had for the Celtics where he showed flashes of being that elite Benny Johnson type of score off the bench, but there's never been enough consistency with that to where you felt that, okay, we can put him out there and he can help us. Uh, Carson has to figure out how to help teams uh, if he's not making shots. And if that's the only way that you can significantly help teams, Damn it, you need to make them shots. You need to make them shots. That's and so all you have to do. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what you got to do. And so he's a guy that, again, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he brings to the table. But it's going to be all about Yamadar uh, in summer league. And I'm just hoping that Carson Edwards can get enough touches to where he can show what he can do. And I'm hoping my man Zach from Cambridge uh, can play well enough to where he at least gets on the radar and becomes someone that they can give some thought to as far as, is this a guy we can add to the roster? Or is this a guy that we should maybe talk to about doing two way? And you know, it's it's a good. It will be a great dilemma for them to have, where you can have a young guy like that that you could potentially add to the fold. Hi guys, Cedric Maxwell here. I want to take a minute to tell you about Marigold Medical. I'm used to keeping my body in great shape, but with arthritis, even the most simple everyday tasks became unbearable. As soon as I called Marigold Medical, I knew I was in good hands. No drugs, no surgery, just an experienced team of caring professionals that wanted to get me back to doing the things I love. Make the call to Marigold Medical and get back to pain-free life. 